few weeks ago, Rick Beato put out a video called Dissonance Equals Emotion. It was a good video, and I recommend that you watch it, but to sum it up, he was talking about the use of dissonant intervals like minor seconds and major sevenths to give your harmonies more interest or emotion, if you will. I enjoyed it, and I think that he had a good point, but I wish he had gone a little bit further with it. Uh, so this is less of a rebuttal and more of an expansion on what he had to say. So first of all, I think we should clarify the idea that dissonance equals emotion, because I don't think that that's true at face value, and I don't think that's entirely how Beato meant for it to be taken. You can take a piano or a guitar, I'll use my guitar, and mash it for a while, and it would be exceptionally dissonant, but I don't think it would inspire much in the way of emotion, save for annoyance, perhaps. Similarly, there's plenty of music that's hardly dissonant at all that's highly emotive, so I think we should clarify this statement and zoom out a little bit to look at the bigger picture. What is dissonance exactly? Well, to understand that, it's perhaps best to look at what it's not, and that is consonance. The most consonant interval that we can find would be a unison, so two notes that are of the exact same pitch playing together. These notes can't be compared, they are one and the same. They lack any sort of contrast. So when we play two different notes, especially, for example, C and D flat, we hear a very strong distinction between the two. A very strong contrast, if you will. So I think a good revision of this statement is that contrast equals emotion. Perhaps emotion is not the best word for that either, but we'll work with that for now. So let's take the most boring melody we could possibly come up with. Great! It's monotone, no variation at all in rhythm or dynamics or anything. So let's change that rhythm a little bit. Let's add a little bit of syncopation, some rhythmic contrast between silence and sound, between long and short notes. Maybe add some muting in the space between the notes to alter the rhythm and introduce a textural contrast. It's already sounding much more interesting. Now, let's go further and alter some of those notes. So now we're not playing monotone anymore. So, how about we go further and add some accompaniment? We'll introduce some long power chords on another guitar. These contrast rhythmically and harmonically. These chords will change as the melody repeats, giving us more contrast, because we're hearing it over different contexts. Now let's add another part up high, playing unsyncopated notes to contrast the syncopation of the melody. Even though there was very little textural contrast and zero dynamic or temporal tempo temporal temporal contrast, it's still much more interesting than what we started with. But be careful. I don't want your takeaway from this to be that the more contrast you have, the better the song, because that's not necessarily true either. Some music calls for being less dynamic, and if you have too much, it can easily become overwhelming for the listener. In any case, I hope this gives you another way of looking at it. Thanks for watching.